praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise God, our Savior Christ. The Oh, we can 
says, God, you have done great things. And as we take a pause, worship's not done yet. So get ready for round two. It's coming soon, very soon. But I think we need to capture just something in this moment to really carry with us into round two of worship. And it was really in that song where it says, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. You have done great things. And I think we as human beings. See, we believe we were created in his image. And God has done great things. And that's an amazing point. But the point that we need to begin with tonight as we worship is this, is that he has done great things, but he's, that doesn't mean he's gonna stop doing great things. Like he's still gonna do great things. He is doing great things. And he's going to do great things. And that gets me so excited. It gets me excited right now in this moment, David and Blake. So good to have you with us, Blake. It gets me excited in this moment. And then it pushes me forward to want to be with God. And to want to be a part of this movement that he wants us to be a part of. See, God is doing great things still. And one of the quickest ways for us to stop being a part of a movement of God in and our life and around our life is to just be making noise and not be actually doing anything. And I'm reminded of really 1 Corinthians 13. And it's an amazing chapter and it's, it's, it's actually used at a lot of weddings and like, that's cool. I don't really know, know where that came from, but it's, it's bigger than just a wedding like chapter. And what's important about it is, is I kind of think about it for myself and for us tonight. I'm so grateful for everyone watching this and joining in in this moment and moments to come. Whenever you join us here, we're so grateful that you made it here. You didn't make it into this, really this feed or this stream or this video by accident. We believe you're here on purpose. You're watching this on purpose. So go ahead and get ready for what God's about to do in your life when you apply something that he's gonna lead you to in this moment, whether you know him or not. But really, 1 Corinthians 13 is so cool because really at the beginning it says, if you're going through life doing all these amazing things, by the way, this is like the Trevor paraphrase real quick for us. You should check it out, by the way. If you're going through life doing this, doing that, and you're making a big deal and you're serving people and you're helping people and you're doing all this stuff, but you don't have love, you're just making noise. Go check it out for yourself. You're just making noise. You can be doing amazing things and making an impact and helping people and serving people, but if you don't have the love, you're just making noise. And really what it's getting at is if you don't have the love of God being the motive in your life to try and help people find and have, you're just making noise. And that's exciting for me because his love is, is available to us. And if you're a Christian, there's a lot of things to get distracted by wherever you are, right now in your life, late in your life. 
There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of good things you could be a part of. There's a lot of bad things you could be a part of. There's a lot of difficult things for us to figure out, to go through, to wade through, to go in and out of. And we're gonna go through it and we're gonna see what happens. But if we don't have love at the beginning of it and in the middle of it and beyond it, we're just gonna be making noise. And I wanna encourage you to pause and to think about how God loves you. And flip over in 1 Corinthians 13 to verse seven with me. See, 1 Corinthians 13 verse seven says this, love bears all things. Like love, if someone has it, they're gonna be a support. They're gonna be there with you in support. And they're gonna be such a support that you can actually uh, let them know what you're going through really and like the burden that's actually in your life and what you're really struggling with and where you're really at. And they're gonna support you and be in it with you and go through the mud and the mess with you. And they're not gonna afraid of the mess and they're not afraid of the mistakes and they're not afraid of the issues because they love you. They're gonna bear it with you. All things, the good, the bad, the ugly, the mess. First Corinthians 13, verse seven, love bears all things. And then it goes on to, to this believes all things, believes, believes in you, believes for you, believes when you can't believe, believes when you don't want to believe, believes that there's, there's a bigger plan, that there's bigger purpose, that there's, there's more love, there's more relationship. Love believes all things. Then it goes on to say this, hopes all things. Love hopes all things. Love's, love says, you know what? Even though you may have had bad intention on hurting me in this moment or messing things up or, or not being my friend or not loving me or being my enemy or being against me, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope that that's not the case. And I'm gonna look beyond it. I'm gonna look for the best in you and I'm gonna look for the God uh, made version of you and what God's purpose and potential is in you. And I'm gonna hope that there's a greater plan and a greater purpose than what you're receiving and wanting for yourself. I'm gonna hope for you. You're just getting started or there's more for you. I'm hoping that there's a future for you. See, that's what love does. And it goes from hope and then it goes to endure. Love endures all things. We're in a season of endurance. I've never tried to be a long distance runner. I'm sure David has. He's tried everything. That's cool. <laughs> See, like when you have endurance, it's something that you've built, something that you can withstand. It's something that says, you know what? No matter the circumstances, no matter the situation, I'm not gonna let any outside obstacle stop me from loving you. Because this type of love in verse seven, that isn't, making, that isn't just making noise, it's actually making a difference. This type of love is not fragile. And we sometimes, myself, I think us as a culture, we look at love and we say, love is fragile. And love is not fragile. Long as this, love is the strongest thing that I can even begin to think of because love is who Jesus is. He is it. His word says it about himself. And it's amazing to understand that when we look at this and we see what love really is, that it's not fragile, it is actually strength and it's actually Jesus. And he wants, he wants a relationship with us and he wants us to have the love that, that he has, the love that he is. I realize in this moment, something that's very life-changing and it's this, I can never have this type of love if I don't have Jesus in my life now. See, I could have had the love that Jesus has for me and to start a relationship with him in the past, but if I'm not having a relationship with him right now, I can't expect the love that he wants me to live in to actually be in my life. And I'm gonna miss this movement of God that he actually wants me to be a part of. And this is for you because he wants to, he is bearing all things for you. He is wanting to endure all things with you. He has hope for you. He wants to go with you. He's ready for you. He's believing the best is coming your way. But do you believe this about him? 
See, we're having a moment right here and someone's getting it and someone's receiving this love that God has for them and they're gonna be able to give it to somebody else. And that's special. Because some of these, really some of the people in, even in this room that I'm in, there's a few of us in here. I don't know them and that's okay because the Lord is leading me to believe the best about him, to endure this moment with him because I believe God is wanting to use this to unite not just a church or a few churches or a some churches or just the people that believe the right things or have a relationship with Jesus, but all people for us to come together, experience him and have him move in our life so that we can have some unity for once and actually see God do something with us. See, before we can have love come into our life like this, we have to receive it from him. Have a relationship with him and see him do something special deeply and gently within our soul. See, back to the song we sang before we went into this moment. He's done great things. Yeah, we know he's going to do great things right now and in your life if you're ready because of all he's done and all he's going to do is really just who he is it's his character and I'm excited for everyone with me in this moment because I believe somebody's receiving from God something David you said uh, this past Sunday and something you've been kind of speaking in my life is um, sometimes we, we need to physically shift our, really our bodies. Maybe it's we need to sit down. Maybe it's we need to get on our knees. Maybe it's we need to raise our hands. Maybe it's we need to close our eyes. Sometimes we physically need to move to get our spirit and our mind to shift and begin to have a mindset that God wants us to have, begin to get us out of our own way and to get in a new position. And if you wouldn't mind, I would love for you to, to, to speak to that as we go into this next song. Because I'm gonna pray for us and David's gonna share with us this thought that's really been on his mind and that he's seen as he's led worship. And I want you to respond. Respond to what God is doing in your heart. Respond to how he's trying to move into your life and just invite him in. So I'm gonna pray for us because God's moving. It's just whether or not we're going to take hold of the, the movement and be a part of it or not. Because he's doing great things. And you're a part of the greatness of God because he made you. He loves you and he's ready for you to be a part of what he's doing in the moment that you're watching this right now. So join me in prayer and let's worship. God, we need you. We are ready for you. I pray that someone's soul right now is ready for all that you have for them. And they simply say this, God, I'm ready for what's next. I'm abandoning everything that I thought was important. I'm abandoning all of my other priorities that may be good or, or may be great and, and that's awesome. I'm abandoning them so that you can take their place and then help me see everything in, it, in, in right priority and what it needs to be seen as. Some things are important, but nothing is as important as you are, God. And so God, I'm gonna abandon everything for a moment to spend time with you to see what you would have for me and then I'm going to view my family correctly I'm going to view my community correctly I'm going to view this culture and what you're doing in this world correctly and I'm going to value things that last forever like people and I'm going to love but first I'm going to receive the love that you have for me because that's going to lead me to love so God I'm going to do that in this moment as I spend time with you in worship in Jesus name I pray God move. Amen. Well, friends, the thought is really simple. You know, oftentimes when we come into a worship experience or go into an experience like we're having right now, there's just so much distracting us. Maybe it's your kids running around the house. Maybe it's that you got the TV going on simultaneously in front of your laptop. Uh, maybe it's just that you had a terrible day and you can't shake that even though you're trying your hardest to sing along. I want to encourage you to do this with me. The thought is this, when you change your posture, 
you change your focus. And so I want to challenge you, and it, it may be a little bit uncomfortable for you, but I promise you the presence of God is worth being a little uncomfortable. And so I want to challenge you if, you, if you're holding on to something today, whether it's bitterness or anything in your life, you know, maybe it could be as simple as you just opening up your hands as we sing this next song. Or maybe it's, uh, maybe you need to take a stand on something in your life. Maybe, maybe some of you dads need to ch- choose today to, to lead your family well. Maybe in, as, in response to that, you could stand as we sing this next song and, and open your hands again for the Lord to uh, impart that authority into your life. There's nothing magic about raising your hands in the presence of God, but it physically shows, Lord, whatever you have for me, I, I receive now. You know, and whatever I've held on to, I give that to you now. Maybe if you would be as, as bold as this to, to kneel in the presence of the Lord. There's something that happens when you physically bow before the Lord. So I want to encourage you, each of you watching and, and us in the room, if you're free, let's change our posture before the Lord and we'll spend a few moments in here and, uh, and we'll continue in worship after a few moments. But
the Lord God Almighty Almighty 
Alleluia, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. Holy, holy are you Lord, we're thankful to know that you are still on your throne. That Jesus is still the source of salvation for all of mankind. No matter where they come from, no matter what they've done, no matter the color of their, of their skin, of their socioeconomic status, they can receive the love and the forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And so this is why we can sing with open hands that worthy is the Lamb of God. And receive freedom and receive healing because you truly are who you say you are. You've done what you said you would do and you will do what you have not yet done but you have promised. And so Lord, for those who believe, we, we don't have to be discouraged by what's going on in the world because this is not our home. There's a city waiting for us that's been designed by God himself. It's a city built on promises. And so we long for that day and we keep our eyes fixed on that. Would, would that kind of uh, thing unify us, Lord? This is not our home. We have a job to do as your people, and that is to spread that love that you've shown us, and we can't do it apart from you. So may we have times like this, even on a Tuesday night or a Thursday night, Father, in our own homes. Lord, I challenge that for each person watching. Would they not just come to these kind of experiences expecting this to be the only source that they get filled up in, but would they take their own faith in their own hands and experience your spirit in their own home on a regular basis so that when they even come to things like this or Sunday morning, it's just an overflow. That's our desire, Lord. That's the kind of thing that Jesus movements are built out of. So do that in our day, Lord. We long to see it. We thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for the truth found in the words that we sing because they're rooted in your word. But thank you for tonight. Thank you for those who are watching. Bless them. Bless each of them, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us as always. We'll be back uh, same time next week. Hit that share button. It's really helpful for us to share this message with as many people as possible. So thank you, and we'll see you next time. Good night.